we'll just get ready. We got some announcements and then um, we'll get ready with our presentation today with Dr. Glib. Um, so welcome everybody. Happy afternoon. It's a little bit rainy here in San Antonio. I don't know how the weather is for you, Dr. Glib, um, but That's we got some good. clouds and, and everything here today. So, <laughs> um, but today I'm gonna go through on our agenda, just go through a couple of South Texas CABA announcements introduce Dr. Gleb Tispersky and allow him the opportunity to have his presentation today. And then at the end, I'll have some final announcements and our door prize, which will be emailed to our winner at that time after today's event. All right, so here is your current um, South Texas CABA board members. If you do notice, we have a couple of newly open positions. We had some board members who have had some personal conflicts and had to um, resign from the board. So if anybody is looking to join the board, please let me know, send me an email. Um, however, at the end of this year, so just a few more months at this point, we are actually going to be having nominations for the next year's board members. Um, as a lot of these are getting ready for their two-year terms to be completed, and we are looking to um, either renominate the current board members that we have right now or bring on new board members to help us fill out our entire team. So with that being said, that's actually part of the announcements that we have going on right now. We do have next month in August a CCP and a CBP certification courses here in San Antonio. So if you are working towards either of those certifications with World at Work, please um, sign up and come and join us so that we can actually hold those courses and be able to provide those in-person courses to all of our members and anybody else that you know who may be working towards their certifications. Um, speaking of certifications, at the end of today's presentation and the final announcements, we do have the HRCI and SHRM certification credits as well. So stick all the way through to the end to get the codes that you need to apply towards those certification credits as well. Um, and as I mentioned, we do have the board nominations coming soon. You will start getting some emails within the next couple of months so that it is open for all of the open positions for nominations. And then later in the year, we'll actually have voting for the people who have been nominated. And then at the very end of the year, when we have our holiday social, we will actually announce the new board members for 2025, 2026 terms. And um, just a plug, we do have in September coming up, Another painting, well, it's not another painting with a twist. We are going to be offering a painting with a purpose. This is actually a fundraiser that we are setting up for South Texas Caba, but it's also another social event. So if you attended our social event that we had last month, we have another social event coming up in September. This one is for anybody who is interested. It is not just for South Texas Caba members. So if you know anyone who enjoys uh, getting out, doing some painting, just wants wants to get away, please encourage them to come and join because not only will you have a fun night with the social event, but it actually helps our association and some of the expenses because it is a fundraiser. So we'll be able to use those towards the expenses that we have as an association. Some event announcements. As far as South Texas Caba goes, our next event in person will be the Painting with a Purpose event with Painting with a Twist. Next month in August, we do have the TTRC coming to San Antonio. So if you have not yet registered for the TTR TTRC, which is the Texas Total Rewards Conference, I do encourage you to invite anybody, but also sign up for yourself. Uh, this is primarily for any total rewards professionals, so not just compensation professionals, not just benefits professionals, for anybody who is wanting to network, get some more updated information, learn about more relevant topics that are happening now in all total rewards aspects, we do encourage you to come and join the TTRC. 
And then World at Work just completed their previous conference. They have announced their next conference for 2025. And it is going to be in Orlando this next year. So um, if you are looking for a total rewards conference on a big scale, on a national scale, we do encourage you to attend the World at Work conference as well. As um, South Texas CABA is a, a affiliate with World at Work, we do always want to make sure to remind you that if you are a World at Work member, and you are a South Texas CABA member, if you are using the same email addresses, you are actually considered a dual member in which it provides you additional discounts with World at Work. For example, your membership, when you get ready to renew for the new year, if you use their promo code, the WAWMEM10, which is here on the screen, uh, you will actually be able to get a 10% discount on top of the renewal discount that you already get because you are a dual member. It also does provide opportunities for different networking things with World at Work. You also have um, webinars that they will provide only to affiliate members. So if you are a dual member, you have the opportunity to at attend those webinars as well. So just make sure you have the same email addresses for both profiles and it will automatically link you as a dual member and you'll be able to get all of those benefits as the dual member with World at Work. All right, so today I would like to introduce Dr. Gleb Tispersky. He is actually a returning speaker for us and we very much enjoyed his topic that he provided for us last year regarding hybrid workers and the importance of hybrid workers. So today he's going to talk to us about the return to office effectiveness through the five elements of total rewards. He has had numerous kudos for the work that he has been providing, and I have them all listed here. I will let you guys read that really quickly, but I hope, Dr. Gleb, you'll actually introduce yourself a little bit more and be able to provide everybody with the awesome contributions that you have made towards all of this hybrid work as it's been coming into effect since COVID. So with that being said, I'm going to drop off and I will let Dr. Gleb, I'm not dropping off the whole call, just my screen share. And then I will let Dr. Gleb share his screen and then Dr. Gleb, you're good to go. Excellent, thank you very much. Really appreciate that kind introduction. Okay, everyone. So. Let's talk about maximizing return to office effectiveness for the five elements of total rewards. You should all be able to see my screen. So I will be sharing my screen. You should all be able to see my screen and the slides presented there. So the slides will be on the screen. If you want to make sure to make highlight me and put me as the speaker and view my whole screen because we'll be using the my screen as the sharing. And this is based on the presentation I just gave at the last uh, Total Rewards Conference in Cincinnati. So I was a featured speaker there, and this is the, the same presentation. So you'll get the same sort of content that people got there. So what we'll do is talk about the data first on hybrid work and the return to office dynamics and then we'll talk about how that relates to the five elements of total rewards. Now, the first thing to think about is that hybrid work, return to office. There are so many people, leaders, who see this as a loss, who see this as a problem, who see this as a challenge to solve. And that's a problematic perspective because if you just see it as a loss, you don't see any of the opportunities. And you, as total rewards professionals, will talk about the kind of opportunities that you can gain and that you can think about in terms of the return to office and hybrid work dynamics. So there's a need to seize the opportunity here and not see it as a loss, but a disruption. And disruption always provides opportunities as well as challenges. So frame hybrid work as a major opportunity, and it will help you as compensation professionals, as total rewards professionals, ensure that you can help your company improve productivity and retention, employee morale while cutting costs. So that's what allows smart and savvy leaders like yourself to seize competitive advantage of the situation. 
Now, in order to do so, we want to avoid putting personal comforts ahead of the bottom line and really focus on the bottom line. US compensation professionals should be well aware of that. So we need to put aside default assumptions, habits, and preferences about how we prefer to work and focus on business objectives and outcomes rather than what's personally comfortable for us. So that's how we'll overcome the mistakes we make around the future of work and integrate best practices on innovative work arrangements. So that's the overall way to think about return to office and hybrid work. Now, there have been a lot of independent surveys on how to do remote work effectively, hybrid work effectively. So let me give you the data. I promised I'll give you the data. 75 to 85% of workers don't want traditional office-centric work. We're talking about remote-capable workers. They don't want traditional office-centric work. 25 to 35% want full-time remote work. So that means something like 50 to 60% want some form of hybrid work. And so that is the most popular option, followed by full-time remote work, followed by full-time in-office work. So the full-time in-office work is something like something like 15 to 25%, least popular option. Now, 40 to 55% would leave their job if forced to come in full-time, whereas 70% are less likely to leave if offered substantial remote work options. Now, I want curious to ask you about this. Which of these is your preferred working style? So thinking about all, all of these options, would you prefer to do fully remote, coming in maybe once a quarter for team building, one day in the office, the rest at home, two days in the office, three days in the office, four days in the office, or full-time five days in the week in the office? You should see a poll in front of you, so please go ahead and vote. Okay. So yeah, so we see results pretty consistent. Uh, we just see a lack of people who want full-time five days in a week in the office, but we see that around 38%, which is generally within the distribution, want fully remote work. And so just over a third, as the surveys generally show, and the large majority, the majority wants hybrid work. So something like just about under two thirds wants hybrid work. So hybrid work again is coming out as most popular, remote work, the second most popular, and the full-time and office work as the least popular. And so that's something to really think about given that a number of companies are increasingly demanding that their employees are coming to the office five days a week. And that's clearly not a good strategy if you want to have good retention. And if you want to help people have a good experience. So we'll talk about these strategies. We'll talk about these dynamics. But I just want to see what the people on the video conference call were thinking about. Now, we know that hybrid employees are also more productive. So having people in the office five days a week will undermine productivity. Over 55% report higher productivity. Only 15% report lower productivity. And this is not simply people self-reporting. Employee monitoring software shows that people who work in a hybrid manner are 5% more productive. And a Stanford University study showed that in May 2020, people who were working remotely compared to in the office were 5% more productive. By May 2022, they became 9% more productive. Why is that? Well, we just had the sudden sharp transition to remote work in May 2020. By May 2022, people figured out how to work remotely more effectively, how to do remote work more effectively, how to collaborate together more effectively. Companies invested into remote work technology, or staff members invested into their store offices. So that's why people were more effective at working remotely by May 2022 compared to May 2020. And certainly people only became more effective at remote work over time. Now, we also know that remote and hybrid employees have better well-being, which of course is one of the five elements of total rewards, which we'll get to that in a bit, but this is important data for you to have. Over 75% in a variety of surveys, this is all taken from surveys like Harvard Business School, from SHRM, 
but don't have a specific stake in the outcome. All of the surveys that I mentioned before. Over 75% report feeling less stressed, over 70% report better well-being, and over 75% report feeling happier. Which again, given total rewards, that is in one of the five elements of total rewards, people's well-being. Now, unfortunately, leaders often tend to make errors around the future of work. One of these is the status quo bias. So cognitive biases are the errors we make because of how our brain is wired. The status quo bias has to do with the desire to maintain or get back to the status quo. So, so many leaders who want to get back to the status quo before the pandemic, they downplay that major disruption caused by the pandemic, caused by people's shift in preferences and desires. In fact, we have research showing that educated males, college educated males are actually working less hours compared to prior to the pandemic. They are working at the same rate, but working less hours, showing that, and this was a study by the Federal Bank of St. Louis, showing that people are valuing their flexible time more, their well-being more. So we can't just stick with the status quo, even though many leaders want to do so. Another problem is the empathy gap. There is an underestimation of people's feelings how people's feelings impact their decision-making. So there's a strong desire for flexibility and well-being after the pandemic, and leaders tend to underemphasize and underestimate this desire for flexibility and well-being. And finally, there's functional fixedness. That's kind of like the hammer-nail syndrome. When you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So when you learn how to manage people in an in-person setting, you tend to apply the same methodology to hybrid settings. That doesn't work very well. So there's a perception that there's only one right, to, right way to function. We transpose office culture and hybrid and remote work, and there's a failure to adapt strategically to this new reality. And so that's what undermines company and leader abilities to compete in the future of work. Now, thinking about these three types of mistakes, these cognitive biases, which of these might be most problematic for the future of work in your workplace? Please go ahead and vote. Okay, so yeah, so overwhelmingly, the status quo bias is the most popular one. So clearly, the status quo bias is what you are all seeing as the worst problem. Good to know. Okay, and so that's something for you to know and for you to be able to talk to the leadership, talk about the status quo bias. Clearly, that's the most big. That's the biggest problem that you're seeing. All right, so let's talk about the five elements of total rewards and return to office, kind of the brunt of the presentation. That was, I provided a framework of thinking, I provided some data. Now let's talk about how that relates to your work as compensation professionals. So the five elements of total rewards, of course, start with compensation, then talk about benefits, well-being, recognition, and career development. So these are the five elements of total rewards. We'll go through them one by one. First, compensation. Retention and recruitment are the biggest challenges in the context of the return to office. So we're seeing the return to office, retention and recruitment are huge challenges. We saw that people are willing, much more willing to stay in a flexible environment, and they're much less willing to stay the less flexibility is offered by a company. It offers substantial cost savings for employees to work remotely some of the time, all of the time. I mean, the more time you work remotely, the more cost you save. But kind of, so it's kind of a degree sort of thing. But there's clearly cost savings. So, for example, Flex Jobs found that it saves up to twelve thousand dollars for individual employees on their gas costs, meal costs, childcare costs, clothing, dry, you know, the dry cleaning, and so on, to work remotely. So this is compared to full-time and office work, 
full-time remote work saves $12,000. So there's a, from a compensation angle, there's a clear cost, significant cost to asking employees to return to the office for all of this commuting workloads and so on. So compensation is something that can be done to help address this challenge. So if your company wants people to return to the office, and I've worked with a number of companies, you want to, of course, look at compensation as one element of mitigating the retention and recruitment challenges, as well as the employee engagement and morale challenges that accompany the return to office. So Stanford University found that the average worker equates the value of working from home to a pay raise of about 8% pay raise of about 8%. So that's something to really be thinking about. If working from home is a pay raise of 8%, then a return to office for the equivalent amount of time for five days a week is like cutting people's salary by 8%, which of course is something that would not make people happy. So you, if you're returning, if you're asking people to return to the office for two days a week, that's cutting people's salary proportionately. To by by one point five percent, so this is my no, that's not what I'm by two point five percent. So this is the kind of equivalence that you want to be thinking about. That people's salaries are being cut by their return to office, and so you need to compensate them for that somehow if they're returning to the office. And the Sherm study found that employees would consider applying or staying in on-site role for a pace raise of 20% with a 30 minute commute. So that's 20% for a 30 minute commute and a 15% with a 15 minute commute. And that's one way, of course. 10% would be sufficient for a half-time hybrid job. So around two to three days a week with a 30 minute commute. So again, people are consistent. They clearly are willing to take some money for a return to office dynamics. So this is something to really be considerate of and thinking about for US compensation professionals when you communicate to your leadership about what should be done in terms of return to office dynamics, in terms of hybrid work dynamics. If they want to increase the amount of days that workers are working in the office, then that calls for increasing their compensation. Now, my clients, the ones I worked with in helping them figure out their hybrid work plans, they definitely increase compensation, especially for key employees. When announcing return to office or when, in, by return to office, I also mean when announcing an increase in, in office days, from one day to two days, two days to three days, and so on. Now, another dynamic is asking those within commuting distance to come in while allowing those outside of 50 miles to work remotely. For example, Zoom is doing that. Other companies are doing that. This situation does raise particular concerns about disparities. So you want to especially come increase the pay for those who are asked to come in to the office. So this is about compensation. So this is the first part, first of five parts of total rewards. Another one is benefits. Now, how do you actually compensate people? You can certainly raise their salaries. And this, my clients definitely did that for key staff, but a really good way of compensating them is through benefits. RTO should not be all salary, except for maybe, again, like I said, key staff, maybe some salary. But research shows that people quickly adjust to salary increases. And I'm sure you know that as compensation professionals. So it can be helpful to get over that initial hump of resistance to return to office or increasing their days in the office, especially for those key employees, but it will be less valuable for long-term employee retention, morale, and engagement. Employees will struggle with traffic. They'll have sticker shock in downtown, eateries, prices. People will, over time, forget the salary increase and just experience the sticker shock and the time drain. So pay them, compensate them through benefits. Most or even all of the compensation, most of the compensation or even all for less key employees, most or half or something like that for more key employees, and you can figure that out, should come through benefits. 
So employees won't simply quickly adjust to it. That's the key. The employees are going to be adjusting to it. You don't want that. They'll directly associate the challenge of RTO with the benefits provided by the employer. So that's what you really want to see, that association between the benefits you're providing, that you're solving the problems associated with return to office, helping solve the challenges. So they'll feel that return to office is more fair and you really understand, I'm sure, how important the sense of fairness is for people to feel that they're compensated appropriately and for them to be retained, to recruit new people, and to have high morale and engagement. So what kind of benefits do my clients offer when I'm helping them figure out the return to office? Of course, commuting benefits. This is the main challenge. So people... The main challenge that they cite with return to office is commuting. So IRS per diem for car is a really good way of paying people. You can also pay for their public transit if they take public transit, parking, of course, if they need it. So show employees that you're addressing this biggest pain point. Provide food benefits, pay for their lunch. You know, that's not going to cost that much, especially if you do an office lunch, but people will feel much better for it. For those who are caregivers, provide caregiving benefits. Parents, elder care, so child care, elder care, that's really good. And there are some nice to have if you have additional funding available. Pet care, home service, butler stuff, dry cleaning, you can certainly provide those. Those are nice to have, and some of my clients who are in the tech sector and finance do provide those. Okay, what about well-being? Now, work from home, we clearly saw from the studies, improves well-being for most people. So we need to face the fact. Return to office or increasing the amounts of days in office will definitely worsen people's well-being because people have to sit in traffic. People really hate that. If they don't like, how, like that experience. They can't do workout from at home. They can't do the things that they prefer to do. So this well-being is worsened. Another problem is that, for example, not controlling your environment. People don't like the temperature in the office. People don't like the sound. There was a recent study showing that about half of all people really think that the offices are too loud. So people don't like that, and that harms their well-being. So this is an unpleasant reality. It's something we need to face and address. So really, as compensation professionals, you should be revisiting your well-being benefits. Consider not only the employee assistance provider, but also gym, yoga studio, and similar benefits, in-person physical benefits that you can provide to people. So specifically, try to partner with local well-being businesses to give back to the community and improve the stakeholder support of people in the local community, yoga, gym studios, and so on. So think about that. That's something that's definitely been a good benefit that my clients have provided and has resonated both with their staff members and with the owners of local businesses, which is always good. Same thing for local eateries, I forgot to mention, for lunch. So make sure to patronize local eateries for lunch and it will give you back quite a bit of benefits in stakeholder engagement and happiness. Next. Next are going to be the two remaining elements, career and recognition. And before talking about them in depth, I want to talk about a survey by SHRM, which found that 42% of supervisors acknowledge, admit, they sometimes forget about people who are working remotely when assigning tasks. So when someone is working in a hybrid manner, they're not in the office, the boss will sometimes forget about. 67% consider those who are working remotely more easily replaceable than those who are on site. And 62% believe that full-time remote work is detrimental to the career objectives of employees. So given that and the career recognition elements associated with remote work really need to be considered. So recognition, proximity bias is a huge issue. It's a tendency to value employees working in proximity to you more highly and undervaluing fully remote staff or hybrid staff who are currently not in the office who are working remote at the time. So this is a big, big challenge. It needs to be addressed. It could be a serious problem for any organization with hybrid and remote staff, and it can land you in some hot water, in fact, if it is found to be discriminatory. So that's not something you want to do. 
So you need to educate managers about this bias and develop programs to specifically recognize and reward remote and hybrid staff and show that you are doing so, both for the legal elements, but also, of course, for the fairness elements and to address this inherent bias, which is not great. So what are the best programs to recognize hybrid and remote staff? You want the staff themselves to be involved in these programs. So managers can then, once staff recognize each other, provide recognition to each other, managers can have a more fair basis for organizational level recognition. For example, you can have a tech peer-to-peer -peer recognition pro program where staff can recognize the others that they work with. So any employee can recognize any other employee in the company or in their division, if you have a larger company, for anything they did. And those who get recognized just get points, which they can they can get badges as well if they meet certain levels of recognition. So it's kind of a gamified system. The points can be used for company donations to charity. That's one thing that my clients do. Another is for company swag. So that's another thing that you can do. The managers track recognition using this app to see which hybrid and remote employees are seen as the most helpful and to better recognize these employees themselves. So that's recognition. What about career? The SHRM survey shows that remote and hybrid workers definitely can face career obstacles. So we've talked about that. If some people spend more time in the office than others, especially junior staff who haven't built good relationships in the company, they don't know what they don't know. And so that's a big, big problem, especially for junior staff. And so facing their career obstacles with that proximity bias. So you want to educate managers and staff about these problems. So train managers to address these blind spots, or this proximity bias, this career problems. And for staff, you want to help them if they choose to do remote or hybrid work, they should do so with full awareness that there are some problems with career consequences. So you want to train them on being proactive in their career development so they can take initiative and overcome these obstacles. So program needs to be created, in other words, to help remote and hybrid staff develop their careers. Now, which of these five elements of total rewards will be most relevant to RTO and flexible work for your workplace? Please go ahead and vote. Most people voted. I'll give folks five more seconds to make their voice heard. Okay, interesting diversity of perspectives. We have some for everyone, a little bit more for compensation and benefits, but also votes for well being, recognition, and career. Great diversity. Excellent to see that. Okay. Good. So at this stage, we'll do a breakout room. So I'll do breakout rooms and you'll get to go into breakout rooms and I want you to discuss for five minutes the impact of RTO, return to office, flexible work, hybrid work increases in these on the five elements of total rewards and for you to think about how you can apply the information that you learned in this presentation to your company, to your work. So five minutes, the rooms are opened. Please click on join and have that discussion. And then we'll have the last content. So please go ahead.
All right, everyone. I'd like to hear about any insights that you've had based on the discussion in the rooms. Please go ahead. Laura, you're on mute. You're right, I was muted. <laughs> um, for our room, um, we were talking about how most of us do already have kind of a high, they created a hybrid policy. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a half and half in the office versus mm -hmm. working from home. Um, and then there, there can be some challenges where, for example, with Valerie, she was saying her president right now, or CEO, whoever's the, the man on the top, um, his position, he likes everybody in the office to be able mm -hmm. to go to the office and have those conversations. So mm -hmm. um, like in her case, she's there all the time, but it can be a mm -hmm. challenge for those who do have that remote piece um, yeah. or they're missing out on that interaction. Whereas we also had Ludmila, who um, her company is 100% remote. So, mm -hmm. but she said that there seems to be, um, you know, they, they're trying to do some things to encourage them and, and keep them active, but there's not really a lot uh, that where they openly talk about like career progressions and mm -hmm. different things like that. So I think it kind of goes to what you were saying, where there's some of those challenges. Yeah. Um in, in opportunities because everybody's fully remote. Um, and then at, at my company and Mike is, is with me as well, but we're kind of a hybrid as well. So we mm -hmm. have a, a pretty good mix. I think for ours, we've got that hybrid policy as well. Okay. That's a good diversity. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate the sharing. And Ludmila, you want to share as well? Yeah, I think uh, Laura already uh, uh, said everything. Yeah, it's I I can say yeah, uh, being remotely, it's very hard to build a relationship. Like mm. we can do that in office, and exactly, it's uh, might be uh, somehow influence on your career path. Yeah. Yeah, it can be that difficult. So you need to deliberately build those relationships. If you don't deliberately do it, they will not happen. Excellent. And uh, Valerie, you know, did you also want to say share something? Yeah, um, since the pandemic, when we came back to the office, we created a hybrid mm -hmm. um, situation and we had some people who weren't terribly thrilled about it. But then they began to realize, actually, they enjoy the hybrid because it does mm -hmm. give us a chance to socialize Mm -hmm. and see people um, uh, more than being 100% remote. So you've got mm -hmm. people who would like to not have to drive to work, yeah. but at the same time, you don't have the social because our company tends to be very social. We have a lot of potluck lunches and mm -hmm. uh, we do, we celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and we do a lot of those mm -hmm. things. And so um, people like, like that part of it. Mm -hmm. So I think they enjoy seeing people. Sure. Uh, and coming to the work, I think they prefer to have more work from home days. We only give mm -hmm. them two a week. Mm -hmm. um, they might like to have three <laughs> mm -hmm. or maybe even four. I don't know. But yeah, but we have an owner who's in his 70s and he's very mm -hmm. old school. So he wants to walk down. He gets very frustrated if he's coming to see you and you're not in your office mm -hmm. and you're working from home that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds like a struggle. Thank you, Valerie. All right, everyone. Are there any questions that you want to ask me? Any questions, any last thoughts that you want to share before we wrap up? I think one of our biggest challenges is mm -hmm. how to manage remote people effectively, mm -hmm. yeah. how to onboard people um, remotely and things like that. Um, my company, uh, we support operations that are spread out over 250 locations in 10 mm -hmm. different states. So we kind of have an idea of how to do some of these things remotely, but it, when it comes to managing somebody who's remote, I think that's where we meet, need more development to um, help people. Okay, yeah, this is definitely, so I was mentioning the training in 
how to manage hybrid work. This is definitely a huge challenge. That uh, is one of the things I talk about with clients, kind of one of the compensation things, which I focused on here. But yes, training is a really big issue. So I'll send you everyone a copy of my book, Returning to the Office and Leading Hybrid Remote Teams, which talks about how to have effective management for people who are hybrid slash remote. So that should help you, Valerie. Okay, any last questions? If not, then Laura, did you want to fill interest out? Oh, I think you want some gift codes to people, right? Yes. All right. I'll I'll share my screen one last time mm -hmm. to close it out. Um, first of all, I do want to thank you again, Dr. Gleb, for joining us today. Um, truly, truly appreciate it. Always full of knowledge and, and expertise, and I appreciate that. Um You're welcome. So to everybody else, uh, just some final remarks. I will get a post-event survey set up and I will be emailing that out to all of our attendees today. Also, everybody on the call today is officially uh, going to be entered into the drawing for next year's Texas Total Rewards Conference, which will be um, actually this year's in San Antonio, but next year will be in Houston. So everybody, as long as you're a member, which everybody on this call is, you will be um, eligible for the drawing. So we'll make sure to get you added on that. And then we'll be doing that drawing later in 2025. Um, for today, I'm going to go ahead and do our raffle that we have, which will be for a $25 gift card. And so I've got everybody who's here except for my board members. And let's see who our winner is today. All right, it looks like Tina. So Tina, you'll get an email um, a little bit later today with your link so that you can redeem your gift card. And uh, congratulations. And then with that being said, let me just pull up for everybody here the credits. So if you are, you know, do have your certification for HRCI or SHRM and you need these recertification codes, here are the codes. I'll leave that on the screen. Um, but with that, thank you everybody for joining us today. Really do appreciate each and every one of you guys. Keep an eye out uh, for that post-event survey and make sure to take a look on our webpage for all of the different events going on. We have things all the way through to the end of the year. Um, so we're very excited for all the opportunities that we're able to provide for you guys, whether it be a social event or a learning event like we're doing today with Dr. Glib. And uh, once again, Dr. Glib, thank you so much. We really do appreciate you. Thank you very much again for inviting me. And you're welcome, Marker. Bye, uh, everybody. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll send a copy of the presentation as well. Oh, good. Thank you, Dr. Glib. Appreciate that. Thank you. Bye. Bye.